Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And we got a Cyber Power Gaming PC that is sold by Best Buy. And interestingly enough, it is their cheapest gaming PC. This PC comes in at $650 and we're trying to see, is it actually worth the money? But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Corsair and their K70 RGB Pro premium full-size gaming keyboard that takes the legendary K70 to the next level. It features the same durable aluminum frame, beautiful per-key RGB backlighting, and sets a new standard for keyboard performance with the new Axon hyper-processing technology that allows input to eight times faster than the conventional gaming keyboard. It also comes with a wide range of different Cherry MX switches, super useful media keys, and a volume roller. Check the link down below to learn more, and special thanks again to Corsair for sponsoring today's video. So one quick disclaimer, if you guys happen to have a Best Buy near you, you may have seen a cheaper gaming PC than this, but this is the cheapest actual company branded gaming PC that's custom. We're not really focusing on like the HP or the Dells that have, you know, the 1650s. Those are a great deal too, but we're actually taking a look at a real gaming company today. And as we're opening this thing up, we're gonna talk about how much it would cost you at home to build this PC yourself. And you might be a little bit surprised how close it actually is, but uh, yeah, let's just not waste any more time and open it right up. So let's go ahead and get out our big knife here. Matt's gonna spit off some facts for you. So we basically went through eBay, and Amazon and Newegg and basically just look at like average sold listings at the time of recording this video, which, uh, when's this video going up? Right now it is actually February 25th. This video is probably going up sometime in March. So keep in mind prices may change slightly, but Matt, go ahead and spit out those facts. So with a PC, if you're building it yourself, you're probably looking at something that's gonna end up being about $604. We'll talk about another variant here as well. First up, the specs of the system, obviously Ryzen 33100, RX570. We guess it's an A320 motherboard. It may not be, we'll figure that out here in a second. Eight gigs of single channel memory, a 500 watt power supply, some regular mid tower case, and a window 10 activation again that would be about $604 but you can actually build a cheaper system with an i3 10100 and be looking at about $570 which really the i3 10100 makes way more sense than the 3100 right now because it's more expensive and they're very similar in performance you can get an i3 10100 for less than $100 3100 normally looking at like close to 140 to 160 sometimes so um, yeah that's the other option we recommend but yeah as you can tell the prices are really close um, this company having to make its margins obviously um, I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, but yeah, technically you can build it yourself cheaper if you're somebody who wants to do that. And then there is two things that we also have to remember with this. So we did count in having to activate windows in that total price. And we also counted tax. We counted shipping costs. So we basically counted everything. If you possibly want to build it yourself, you say 50 bucks if you want to build this exact same one, if that. Now also, that is not including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth probably, as I would guess this board has. It's also not accounting the keyboard and mouse that this comes with, which the keyboard's right over here. So basically, I mean, those are two extra things, three extra things that you're gonna have to buy. If you want a Wi-Fi motherboard or a Wi-Fi adapter, you're looking at anywhere from an extra 15 to about 40 bucks. And if you want a cheap keyboard and mouse, because these are cheap, they're not like gaming keyboards, they look cool and all, but there's nothing really gamer about them you're still looking at at least 25 bucks for a combo like this. So at the end of the day, you're literally breaking even. You're building this for the same amount, but guess what? You get a warranty with these guys. And on top of that, you're getting it known that if it doesn't work, like something's wrong with it, you're gonna get it covered. You know, I mean, it might, it might be a total hassle because it's probably not quite like that PCBros.tech customer support, but they do have it. So at the end of the day, if you really need to get this thing warranted, um, we're pretty sure that you can probably get it done. So yeah, we're gonna open this thing up and see what we have inside. As you might have heard with the specs, this one downside with the system is single channel memory. Again, we preach this every day. Go dual channel, even if it's just two four gig sticks. Don't even worry about 16. You really want that dual channel performance. Um, it looks like we got some free Xbox stuff. Xbox Game Pass. Ooh, a month Whoa. of Game Pass. What is that? What else do we get here? We also got oh, probably like assembled in the support. They're in Baldwin Park. They're molding. They give us some nice instructions on. <laughs> how to plug it in. Make sure you plug it in the back, make sure you plug it into the wall. You'd be surprised, we've had some people ask that before. But, so basically on the inside here, you get a computer. You probably expected that, you know, nothing too crazy there. They do actually a really smart thing here and they basically tell you to read before moving. Connect your graphics card connector, or sorry, your display out to here, any of these ports. And I'm actually kind of digging this 570. We actually have up to four monitors um, natively supported. So that's pretty good. Now, a couple things we didn't know when we were reading these specs was, is it a four gig 570? More than likely, I would highly doubt this would be an eight gig, but that'd be a huge bonus if it was. Not because it really adds much performance, but mainly they're worth a lot more because of mining and whatnot. But we got a pretty nice looking build. So going ahead and opening this up, you can see here the Wi-Fi is actually using a Wi-Fi card, which is kind of cool. It's not just built straight into the board. 
Um, interestingly enough, they actually do have an M.2 SSD in the picture. It showed that they didn't, so this must just be a slightly newer model. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is got a little bit of dust in the graphics card. Another thing I noticed is this. I mean, this one's not gonna affect anything, but I don't know, it just looks a little sloppy to me leaving that one open, but one stick of Crucial Ballistics RAM. Let's see what speed we got lucky with here. It's cool they give us a Crucial stick. Uh, 3200 megahertz looks like, yeah? Yeah, not DDR4, bad. 3200, not too bad. So this can really be remedied by just adding another stick. I mean, you can buy these in single kits, but more than likely what these companies do is they basically buy dual channel kits and then they split them up because you actually save money that way. And it's actually a really good amount of money when you're um, selling in the hundreds of thousands of PCs. This cooler is interesting. Yeah, so that's it's, weird. it's it, a Cooler Master Cooler, which is who makes the Wraith coolers. Um, so my guess is they buy these CPUs as like bin chips and they probably just kind of have like a one size fits all cooler because this cooler does look bigger than like a normal Wraith Stealth, obviously. So this can probably go up to like almost Ryzen 7, maybe Ryzen 7. So that is kind of like a props to them for a slightly upgraded cooler in my opinion. So yeah, the motherboard appears to just be an Asus board. It looks like an Asus Prime. We're not really too sure yet if it is a A320 or B450, but my bet would be on one of the two. Um, the picture actually showed it only had two RAM slots too. So clearly they kind of substitute parts as needed. Um, and it does look like we've got an XFX uh, RX 570 four gig. Yeah, so it's a four gig. Figured it would be because that would definitely cost more if it was a eight gig model. And I think we got one more thing to open up. The cable management and power supply. the cable supply. management. Yeah, and I'm curious what power supply we got too. I just quoted a 500 watt 80 plus bronze, which there's quite a few for that option, but it could be a 450. It could be more also. It could be a 80 plus gold for all we know. I'm gonna bet it's like a Gomdius like uh, power supply. It has no branding whatsoever. How do they even Is get this in here? Uh, a Pivia? Is this a Pivia? Yeah. Oh, oh it's okay. in a Pivia. 600 watt prestige power. It's 80 plus gold, but I would really take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, I, I see these all the time on Amazon, and I, I've a PV is a great company, by the way. We work with them a lot, and we use a lot of their cases. Power supply is kind of more of like an amp market. We've used a PV a lot in the past um, for their power supplies back before, like 80, when 80 plus white was popular. Yes. Um, and you know, getting like 80 plus gold was just so expensive. Even 80 plus bronze is really expensive. We did use. Roswell and a Pivia and never any major issues. I did have an Apivia power supply blow up on me once. I think <laughs> Matt kind of remembers that. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that though, I mean, 80 plus gold, as long as it's somewhat accurate, then you know, I trust it. But 600 watts though, a little bit of an upgrade path if you need it. So yeah, now that we've looked at this system and seen all the ins and outs of it, of course we gotta load up some games and see how it performs and see if you should buy the $650 PC from Best Buy. So let's do it. All right guys, now that we have this CyberPower PC from Best Buy all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to test this PC in a handful of titles, those being Apex Legends, Cyberpunk, Forza Horizon 5, and Call of Duty Warzone. First up in Apex Legends at 1080p on medium settings, we ended up averaging about 80 plus FPS with the frame rate peaking at over 100 every so often. This is where we start to see how good this PC is for esports titles. When you're playing games like Apex, Fortnite, CSGO, Valorant, Rocket League, and all those other titles that are a lot lighter to run on a gaming PC, you're gonna have no problems getting, well, 60 plus FPS and even on all low settings, maybe 144 plus FPS for a high refresh rate monitor experience. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're gonna copy this build spec for spec, you're not saving that much money building it by yourself unless you use some extreme deal hunting. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you use some extreme deal hunting, you might be able to beat this price. But you obviously can build something equal, if not better, with the i310-100 and actually save a decent amount of money, about $100 that is. So I don't think this PC is poorly priced given it's a pre-built computer. Um, the single channel eight gigs is gonna hold it back in some titles, but as you can see from some of the esports benchmarks, we really don't get held back all that much. Next up is a new addition to the benchmark rotation, Cyberpunk. On medium settings using the built-in benchmark, we end up getting an average of 41 FPS. You guys asked for some more games in the benchmark rotation, and Cyberpunk is one of them. If you guys have any other suggestions, let me know down below. I absolutely love games with built-in benchmarks. And uh, yeah, Cyberpunk is a really demanding AAA title, pushing that 570 to its limits. And the eight gigs of memory is not helping either. We are getting close to pinging at 100% usage for the eight gigs of memory in pretty much any game we test with this system. So there are two very 
variables here that I would upgrade with this PC once you get it. Go with 16 gigs of start, and at some point when the GPU crisis is better, you can slap in a better GPU and uh, have a better experience with this PC overall. Next up in Forza Horizon 5, which is another GPU dependent game on medium settings using the built-in benchmark, we average 52 FPS. It's cool to see that if we ran on medium low settings, we'd probably get a lock 60 FPS in a game like Forza Horizon 5, which is absolutely beautiful. So yeah, that's kind of a win for this PC. And I think this system is still pretty good overall, regardless of what these benchmark numbers are saying. Uh, 570s are very expensive to get right now. And the fact that the Ryzen 3 3100 is a good solid CPU and a good base to get you started and you're on the Ryzen platform with easy upgrade path in the future, I think this is a pretty solid deal right now at Best Buy. And the last game we decided to test was Warzone at 1080p medium low settings and we averaged about 60 plus FPS. In recap, this is not nearly as bad as I thought this PC would be. I thought the single channel 8 gigs would really hold it back and I thought the specs were just not that great for the money. But when doing a deep dive, as I mentioned at the beginning of this benchmark run at the market right now and the prices that you're paying, it's really not that much cheaper to build it yourself unless you go with a config that is similar. So going with an i3 and a 570 will probably net you about $100 savings. And I would recommend you go that route if you can build your own, but there's people out there who don't want to build their own and just want to buy something off the shelves. And I really think this is a decent option if you're someone who wants to buy it at Best Buy. So now we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how to bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we just got done benchmarking this PC and overall it performed pretty well, probably about how you expected. Now, like Matt and I said, the main gripe is just the fact that we only have one single eight gig stick of RAM. If we had an extra stick, that'd probably allow for 20 to 40 more FPS in most games. So that is something to keep in mind when buying this and something that if you did build it yourself, we highly recommend going with two four gig sticks or if you can afford it, two eight gig sticks. So as far as the cheapest PC that can game from Best Buy goes, I think it's a pretty decent option. So if you want to take a look at this PC any other gaming PC that Best Buy has to offer, check the links down below. There'll be affiliate links and they will help us out. And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to take a look at this thing. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And hey, Best Buy and CyberPower are pretty cool, but we actually have our own business that we can sell you a PC that we think is even better. PCBros.tech is our website where you can buy gaming PCs from us or come in person to our store and uh, buy a gaming PC like this or something really high end with a 3090 and use code TOSTYBROS2 on checkout to save 2%. See you guys later. Goodbye.